It's the brand new snacking podcast where we try snacks, new and old, and ask the question, you tried that? It's episode two of You Tried That? And we're back to try three new snacks. How'd those first ones sit with you guys? Because we're, we're filming a two in a day here. So I have, yeah, I have a couple follow-ups on the Ritz Handy Snacks from, from last episode. <laughs> two, two, two points here. The first is um, I talked to my wife, who she was actually a huge Ritz Handy Snacks fan, and she ate them, like a, or just regular Handy Snacks, I mean. She, ate, she didn't remember them being by Ritz either, but she said that the cheese used to be harder, and that okay. that's why you had to have that spatula. And she used to love them and eat them all the time. And I had her try this one, and she thought it was disgusting. Like, she actually spit it out. They, oh. I guess they changed the formula at some point, because she, did, she didn't remember the cheese being that creamy. So then well. we tried to feed it to my dog, who is actually a pretty picky eater. He will, you know, not eat a lot of stuff. Like, if we drop food on the ground, he won't eat it. And he was very tentative about the handy snacks, but eventually he started eating them and then started chomping away at them. So I think he gave it a like that. That's good. Geiger, what would your dog do with the handy snack? <laughs> I didn't let beast nor human touch those things. <laughs> I, I, I did ask my wife, like, I Betsy, I'm like, did you eat these before? And she was like, yeah, I used to like them. And she also thought that you used to have, like, a harder piece. Because I told her there was no spatula. And I will say eating both Reese's Cup was probably a bit much. They're just so sweet that it just kind of sat in my gut. But then I ate the entire bag of chips after that, so <laughs> I can't really complain too much. I have been munching on these chips between episodes, and so I'm not really prepared to snack, but we're going to snack here. So, <laughs> Are you also then prepared to eat pizza at your house in about an hour? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tiki, we were talking about football before, just before we started here, because we're in the midst of the playoffs, or depending on when this goes up. Man, that Super Bowl was great, huh, guys? Uh, um, <laughs> What uh, snacks do you guys typically associate with watching a football game or, like, a Super Bowl party or something? So I have, like, a standard uh, Super Bowl snack menu that I usually do, which is uh, I'll usually make, like, puppy chow, which is, I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's basically, like, checks covered in, like, melted chocolate and peanut butter and then sprinkled with powdered sugar, and it yeah. is so good. It's, like, yeah. crazy addictive. So I'll do that. I'll do, like, this, like, pigs in a blanket where you take, like, little Smokies and wrap them up in, like, little croissant rolls and cook them in the toaster oven. And then I actually, this year I'm going to a, a big party at my friend Tom's house that he's hosting, and I'm going to deep fry a turkey there, um, which I've deep fried turkey over, I know that's not a traditional Super Bowl snack, but, uh, or even a snack. <laughs> or even traditional, but uh, <laughs> a light snack of a deep fried turkey, huh? <laughs> yeah. But I've done it like last couple Thanksgivings, and then since I was since I was not around for Thanksgiving this year, I was out of the country. That I thought I'd do it for the Super Bowl just so I could quench that that thirst. Sounds delicious. Yeah, that sounds good. I generally, if I go to Super Bowl party, I want to have some chili there. That's just uh, would be my preference, and then. Beyond that, I'm looking for your standard many salty snacks to, to uh, go between, but I, I would go with the chili as my number one choice. And that's there might be some difference between the, us and Chad because we are living in a cold weather climate, and the chili yeah. seems to really be perfect for that, and maybe not so much in uh, California. Are you Now, do you just like eat it with a spoon, or you like to dip stuff in it, or like drink it like a Pepsi? I like... <laughs> <laughs> I like to uh, use a, a small red rectangle and convey it to my mouth. Just to <laughs> now, I I douse it with cheese, with shredded cheese, and actually prefer almost more cheese than chili. So I just like to eat a bowl of cheese. Is basically what I'm doing. <laughs> a bowl of cheese with just two beans <laughs> to topped on it. Do you do, like, homemade chili or, like, from some can or something? No, yeah, like a homemade. I mean, we'll do it here sometimes, and that is Laura making it. And then when we're someone else, when we go somewhere else, I assume they're making homemade chili. So I want people that aren't me making me chili. <laughs> I That reminds me, back when I, f I first moved out to California, like, uh, in 2006, so, like, 12 years ago, and when I first started at my job, the somebody on my job, he wanted to do, like, 
he just had this idea to do like a, a chili con carne. I think he'd been watching a lot of South Park or something like that. So he wanted to do like a chili cook off, and he was like, "Oh, like uh, let's all bring different recipes of chili into work and like try them." And at the time, the running joke was that you know the only things I really liked to eat were chocolate and Alfredo sauce. Like I was kind of known for loving those two things at work. So I was like, "All right, I'm going to make a chocolate Alfredo chili." With <laughs> so what I did was I just like cooked some. Uh, ground beef or whatever, and then like I put like I put it in an Alfredo sauce and like added in like a bunch of like broken up pieces of ch- chocolate and some chocolate chips and like melted it all together, and then like brought it in. <laughs> and you guys are making a face. It was exactly as disgusting as you could imagine. It was <laughs> one of the grossest things <laughs> I've ever eaten. Anybody's that most people at work wouldn't even try it because it just smelled so vile. <laughs> People starving in other countries and we're dumping, <laughs> oh, I have two pounds of joke food I brought into work. Yeah, it was one of the worst things I've ever done. Oh. Was everyone yeah. around the party whispering, you tried that? <laughs> <laughs> they were, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I made, and I made, like, way too much, so I ended up just having to, like, just dump it all in the, in the compost or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Gagger, what are your Super Bowl snacks? Well, one, my fav- my new favorite from the last couple of years is one that your wife actually first made that I had never had. Now I love it is when you take like a jalapeno and you slice it in half and scoop out all the seeds and then you fill it with cream cheese and cheddar cheese, and wrap it in bacon and then put Jeez. it in the oven. That is really good. And then just like chips, bags, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the chips stuff. I like cheese. Uh, I like chili too. I think pulled pork is another good like group. Like you, you don't want something too fancy at a Super Bowl party. So it's just like stuff you can make a sandwich out of. Uh, I was at a sporting event party with a, like a coworker's house, and they had like Italian beef sandwiches, and stuff like that. But yeah, mostly for me, like at a party, I like to just graze a lot of different things. It's not normally about the meal. It's like chips and pretzels and brownies. And, yeah, rifle through their cabinets, <laughs> looking <laughs> right. some cooking spray, and if they have <laughs> a can of soup or something. I'll take that. <laughs> Basically, how I lived in college when I. Paid rent at your apartment and didn't actually live there. Just ate all of Sean's food. Right, and, uh, and you used to just watch a tape of the Super Bowl every day, so that I was really. <laughs> it was very strange. <laughs> I would watch pre-recorded Super Bowl. <laughs> how <laughs> how spicy are again. those jalapeno things? Because you scooped out the seeds. Yeah, they're, they've got some heat to them just from osmosis, but yeah, they're not too bad because there's no seeds in there. I actually like super spicy food. Like more and more as I get older, I like spicier food, but I'm still not to the level of eating food just because it's hot like these stunt like eat these wings and get a t-shirt sounds just dumb to me you're just ruining your day but um but they're not too bad they're not too spicy i also really really have gotten more into like wings like buffalo wings and like some sort of chicken wing at a party i think it's fun that's a uh, perfect segue about the spicy foods because well the first one we're going to try today is a jalapeno popcorn and Chad, you said that you don't basically eat anything that has the word jalapeno in it, right? I don't, yeah, I, I absolutely hate spicy. I'll never understand spicy food. It just makes me uncomfortable, and uncomfortable is not what I The only time I want to be uncomfortable when I'm eating is because I've eaten so much that I'm just like, my stomach hurts. But I don't I don't like that it, it like, like spicy food just makes my mouth burn. I just feel miserable. So, yeah, I try to stay away from all spicy food. I'm a huge wuss. So uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll see if we like these. This is Pop Brand Gourmet Popcorn. It says Fire Corn on it, with the, and it's got like a jet fighter on it. I don't know what that has to do with popcorn or spicy, <laughs> but real white cheddar jalapeno popcorn. Now what? I, this brand seems familiar, but I don't know. They make. A, I'm assuming they make other popcorn. Yeah, they make like a lot of. You can. I think you can find them in like most regular grocery stores. Like the regular. I don't know if they have this this uh, jalapeno brand in most grocery stores, but I, I've definitely seen like just their sort of like regular popcorn. I think they also make like a um, like a caramel corn style as well. All right, let's uh, open up the popcorn and see what we got. Listen to the sound of our bags opening. Give it a yeah, little. I don't know why I'm before you eat. showing it to you, even though no one will see it. Be able to see any of that stuff. It smells kind of like okay. standard popcorn. Now, in general, I'm actually not that. Oh shit! This is way too spicy for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in general, I'm not that big of a popcorn guy. I feel like it doesn't really do much, and it just like gets stuck in my teeth and stuff. So I'm predisposed Ooh, not to like popcorn. Ugh. 
It is a little spicy. <laughs> I'm guessing I know you guys' rating. But, you know, it's actually not that spicy, like, as far as in your mouth. I only really feel it, like, in the back of my throat. Yeah. It's not a pleasant... It's not a pleasant spice. Oh, I'm such a wuss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really... I'm I could I'm medium on uh, my spice preference. Like, I I like heat sometimes. I'm not a huge fan. I can go either way on it. And this to me is just not a pleasant amount. The the heat is not pleasant. Like you say, it's only in the back of my th- way back of my throat after yeah. I'm done. Yeah, I I like I like <laughs> spicy food, and this isn't bad. I would say that the heat, like the jalapeno, does nothing to add to the flavor. It just adds heat for no reason. Like spicy food, just for the sake of being spicy, isn't good. I like spicy food when it makes it taste different which i feel like i'm just eating cheddar popcorn and then two seconds later the back of my throat is burning. i don't even taste the cheddar i don't either it just tastes like regular popcorn that makes my mouth mm. uh mad at me yeah i don't that's I, i'm unimpressed with this having said that love that no i'm just kidding <laughs> how much of this is your dog gonna eat after wolfing down that handy snack <laughs> No, I don't feed him popcorn because Janet Janet has wanted to feed him popcorn before, and I said no because I was afraid that it was going to get stuck in his teeth. All right, no, let's, that, uh, what's your stance on popcorn in general? I am a pretty big popcorn. Fan. I love popcorn at the movie theater, obviously, like most people. And then uh, popcorn at home, I'll go with that the cheddar caramel mix, just the Chicago mix, just on occasion, like on holidays and stuff. But I don't really eat it on a free time snack. Just more of a special occasion type of thing. I like it a lot. I agree on the movie theater thing. It's one of the healthier options they'll have at work. Like they'll have, actually, I think it's Smart Pop, but it's like just regular popcorn. And it's a, like less full of fat and stuff. So I eat it a lot at work. But here's what my wife has been craving lately because she's a big popcorn fan. So she bought a bag from from Trader Joe's of like the un, like the regular kernels or whatever. So it, so before we you know we'd always done like microwave popcorn, but this is like the old fashioned kind that you actually have to pop yourself. And so it's actually <laughs> not that hard to pop it. Like you just sort of put it in a pot with a little bit of oil and pop it. So I've been doing that yeah. for her lately, and then putting olive oil and we bought this everything bagel seasoning from oh. Trader Joe's also sprinkle that on top. That's pretty good. I could fuck with that. Yeah, we like to do the kernels at home sometimes, like in the old. We actually just recently got one of the old hot air popping machines just because it's fun for kids. And there is a a different taste to popping the kernels yourself, for sure. But I think I don't think it's that much better to where I prefer to pop it on the stove or anything like that over just buying a bag. Now, what was that you were just showing us? Yeah, as we were talking, I continued eating, and there was like... I don't know if you can see in the webcam. This is great podcasting, but it's like a bluish brownish. It looks like a either like a burnt chip or a human scab. I can't tell which. <laughs> it's like it's a gross brownish. Eat bluish. it! Eat it! Eat it! <laughs> <laughs> what it tastes like? Human scab. Kind of better than the popcorn. It was kind of like like a burnt just- something. Is it a burnt jalapeno? It almost seemed like a burnt chip or something. Maybe, or maybe like a crumpled up jalapeno slice, but I don't think that's what's in here. All right. Well, that was disgusting. Oh, wait. There's uh... another one. I got another one. <laughs> Go back to it and try one. <laughs> what is it? I don't know. You Are the scabs falling off your fingers as you're eating popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually popcorn that was stuck in my beard from two weeks ago, I found. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. Oh I'm wait, I again. see on the back no? of the bag it says made in a factory by people with scabies. So I guess that must be <laughs> what's going on. Yeah. Great scale <laughs> putting in my mouth here. Yeah, the cross <laughs> the cross contamination word warning <laughs> mentions They're not bad, peanuts though, and grayscale. <laughs> I've eaten both of them, they're not bad. All right, Gagger, we're gonna start with you because you're the only one who kept going after three kernels of this. <laughs> Which am I rating, the popcorn or the scabs they gave me? Uh, well, do both. Let's okay. Start I with would the popcorn. Say the popcorn, I, I didn't dislike it. I, I, I expected more actual jalapeno flavor other than just random heat. But there's something about it that makes me keep eating. So I would probably say indifferent to that. Is there something about the popcorn or something about you that you keep eating? <laughs> it might be a crippling relationship I have with food. Um uh, <laughs> I would say the scabs, slightly <laughs> less indifferent to that. I mean, maybe probably more like a, a slight dislike, only because <laughs> I don't know what it is. And uh-huh. B, 
it could be a human scab. But... <laughs> Does it have cheddar on it? Any cheddar flavor uh, no. in that scab? It, no, it was like a burnt up jalapeno tasting scab. All right. Well, so I'm saying dude, this was fine. I wouldn't go out of my way to get it, but I didn't dislike it. I'm digging through my bag now looking for scabs. Yeah, right. But I, I, don't I don't see, see any. any scabs in mine. I could have saved <laughs> mine for you guys and mailed oh, it There's to one. Scabs. I got one. Got a scab. I think they are oh, jalapenos. Yeah, I got another one in here. Yeah, this is totally a piece of jalapeno. Yeah. It's, okay, uh, yours is like of, Maybe oh. that's intentional, actually. Yeah, Yeah, because no, look gotta... at the front of the bag has the little uh, picture of the jalapeno on it. Oh, I yeah, got one. I found it. I think that yeah. is intentional. I found it. All right, well, I guess i got to eat that scab now. I don't want to. I'm going to. I wish I had described it as a scab now, so I thought. Ooh, oh, oh. <laughs> it, it is just a jalapeno. That's all it is. That I didn't buy. It's actually kind of tasty. I would eat that. No. No? <laughs> no. I think I prefer the scab to the popcorn. Yeah. <coughs> All right, uh, Chad, what's your, what's your rating? <laughs> hate that. I hate that. That is everything I hate in a snack. Um, it was too spicy. It didn't really have much flavor. It contained human scabs. So, um, yeah, that gets a hate that for me. I usually don't mind scab food, but this did <laughs> not uh, fit the bill for me. So I usually I'm gonna... nod my arm when I wake up in the morning for 10 minutes. <laughs> I I'm gonna double in there though. That's weird. I'm gonna double down on the hate that, and wow. so that's that's this is a, our lowest rating yet. It just there was if the, if they loaded it up with cheddar, I could deal with that spice, but it wasn't even the cheddar wasn't even there. So overall, oh. don't recommend that. No, I can not recommend the white jalapeno pop popcorn. I think and I think I'm ready to move on to the next one just so I can get a new taste in my mouth. Yes, please. Ooh, all right. Oh. Next we're going to go sweet and I've been looking forward to this one. It's Sheila G's brownie brittle and the chocolate chip flavor. I don't know if there are more than one flavor to it, but it looks like there might be. And it's described as rich brownie taste with the cookie crunch. If you look on the back, you'll see a picture of Sheila G. Yeah. Huh. Uh, we'll Where would story. you What would she's you say covered about in Sheila scabs. G. <laughs> when it comes to Sheila G, would you guys say you're indifferent to that, like that? What would you say? Well, she seems like a nice lady. A nice I mean, photo. it all began when she was a passionate chocolate-loving baker and took a treasured family recipe for fudge brownies and her way into, baked her way into a thriving business. So there you go. You know oh. what I meant. <laughs> She's no. Here's the question. So in the story, it says like many brownie aficionados, Sheila is particularly fond of the crispy edges. So where do you guys come down on that when you eat a brownie, edge piece versus centerpiece? All right. Um, I could see the edge part of it. I like the combo first. Like I don't want to dismiss that the combo isn't what's the preference, but I would go with the center if I had. If you only gave me the edges, I would not be happy. I need the the fudgy moist center. To me, it doesn't care unless there's, like, more frosting on the edges because it's, like, a corner piece because I like frosting. But I think we're talking about an unfrosted brownie. Let's okay, see. Then, it, then it doesn't – literally doesn't matter. It's the same to me. I don't know. So I used to only eat centerpieces, but then the last, like, couple years, I've sort of come around to where I enjoy the edge pieces. And we actually brought, bought one of those edge all-edge brownie pans. Have you seen uh, those uh-huh. where it's, like, shaped yeah. like kind uh-huh. of an S? The brownie pan is shaped like an S so that when you pour it in, every piece is an edge piece. Because uh, my That's wife loves far. the edge pieces. Yeah. Good. It's enough of a thing where they made a pan for it? Uh, there's a, there's, How there's, different You can it? find anything you want on the internet. Like, there's, there's a pan <laughs> for it, and you can probably find a video of somebody getting off on that pan. Right, so, <laughs> Are we opening up? I yeah, I, sm- I opened mine. It smells great. I open these. How did you open it? Uh, I, 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 I took it. the top and twist, like, just pour like a piece of paper. Oh, um, so if you notice on Sheila G's uh, little note, she oh. actually puts XO on the bottom. So. Oh, all right, yeah. all right, Sheila, I see what you're doing. I I'll say this before I eat them. I love brownies. Yeah, I, me too. Brownies are right near the top <laughs> of the snack <laughs> chain for me. Uh, brownies and chocolate chip cookies are one and one A in terms of sweet snacks. So. This potentially could be right up my alley. It smells yeah. great. Yeah, uh, I love. I I'm a chocolate guy myself. When it comes to dessert and sweets, I'm almost exclusively chocolate. So I am looking forward to it, eating this. It smells more brownie than cookie. The smell. Hmm. It's the consistency of a cookie. Well, a very good. crunchy cookie. There's nothing soft about this. It's no. I mean, it's called brittle on the front, so we should expect that. 
Sheila G's eyes are kind of soft. Now that I'm looking at her, she's <laughs> got a soft countenance. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. You know, it's uh, just sort of eating like a, a really hard, maybe stale chocolate cookie. But, or like a chocolate cookie that was like maybe burnt a little bit in the oven, except without that burnt flavor. Like it's just gotten super crispy. So you taste more cookie than brownie? Yeah, it, I don't, I, I taste, I get that hint of like brownie flavor, but mostly it's just sort of like a hard chocolate bomb. Now this one says though chocolate chip. And if you look at the front, you can see the example they had actual chips on it. I don't see any chips in these. Am I Yours is, blind has or? chocolate oh. chips in it. Yeah, I got plenty of chips. Yeah. yeah look Turn at that thing over. Mark. Yeah, look at oh, the other side on the of bottom. it, Kager. <laughs> oh, I, you know what? I was still eating the popcorn. My bad. No. Um, <laughs> now I see it. Okay. No, I but you see only it. see okay. the chocolate right. chips on one side, yeah. Who did we start with last time? We started with Geiger, so Chad, yeah. you started us off in this one. Mm, right after I took a bite. Um, Yeah. I mean, I'm a big chocolate fan. I like this. This is good. I would definitely um eat these. I mean, they're not my favorite thing, you know, like... The chocolate is like maybe I would like a little bit more sort of like brownie flavor from it, if that makes sense. But uh, yeah, I like that. All right, for me, this isn't. It's not as good as a brownie or a cookie to me. It's sort of does neither one perfectly well. Yeah. Uh, the flavor is good because it's just the flavor of a brownie, which is hard to mess up. But honestly, if I even even in terms of cookies, I don't like a a crunchy cookie. I like a soft cookie like if i'm gonna get one i need one that is warm fresh out of the oven for my preference same deal with like a i just like substance to it the same thing with like getting a, a pizza it's a reason i would not choose thin crust over a lot of other things i just like something that's doughy and chewy but the flavor is still fine so while it's okay i'm just gonna still i'm gonna stick with indifferent to that and that's a little i didn't feel that upon first tasting but the more i eat the less i sort of want to keep eating you know now that I have stopped eating, the aftertaste is kind of sitting there, and I'm not so much a huge fan of that. I wonder how these would be dipped in milk. Maybe they would be, like, a little bit better. That might help. So maybe I downgrade too indifferent to that. Somewhere in between there. Too indifferent, huh? Um, yeah, I get, uh, what do you think yeah. about Sheila G? <laughs> the lady? <laughs> She's a fox, my friend. Uh, the dessert? Um, I, I guess when you call something, I know they called it brittle, but when you call something a brownie, I was expecting something like chewier and softer. This just felt like a stale brownie or like a, like a cookie cracker almost. It was good. It's chocolate. I wouldn't say I'm indifferent. I think it was good. I'd probably put it a, a like that, although it, it was not as good as I was expecting to love it because I love brownies and I didn't love it. But I would put it like that. I'd eat it again. It wasn't. I finished it that way. You ate the whole bag already? <laughs> yeah, I guess we're, I'm going to have to come up with a new rubric because I almost ate the whole bag of popcorn, too. Good Lord, uh, man. Yeah, I like to eat, guys. Yeah, I think I think the potential is what brought the, it down for me. It's hurt by the potential yeah. for me. Yeah, I just <laughs> we just saw it. Geiger dump the bag into his mouth. Did you eat the like... popcorn and the brownie together? <laughs> <laughs> The silence uh, is telling. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, who doesn't like a good old-fashioned, like, jalapeno cheddar brownie? So we have two know. likes and yeah. an indifferent. Is that where we're at? No, I, I think, think so. two indifferents. Yeah, downgraded. Uh, I'm, like, I'm like a mild like. You know, okay. I probably wouldn't go okay. out of my way for that. But uh... So our average is just slightly above an indifferent. So mm. it's, it's a very small recommendation, but... But not that much. And that's going to uh, take us to our third and most interesting of our selections this week. And it's called a, a This Bar Saves Lives. And there's a period and a trademark at the end of that. This Bar Saves <laughs> Lives, period, trademark. No I other looked... bars are allowed to save anyone's life. <laughs> <laughs> I looked it up. And it's just, I mean, it's a charity bar. Like Proceeds go towards helping children. So if either one of you guys don't like this... You hate needy children. <laughs> <laughs> this particular flavor that we have here is Madagascar vanilla, almond, and honey. So, Chad, where'd you get this? I got it at work. It is about an inch and a half <laughs> by an inch and a half. I mean, this is a tiny little rectangle of snack here. On the back, it says, For every bar sold, we give life-saving food to a child in need. We eat together. So do you think they give them... These bars. 
<laughs> or do they give them <laughs> actual food? <laughs> so wait, so for every bar sold, we give life-saving food to a child in need that we then eat together? <laughs> they they the feed the child to fatten them up <laughs> so that they can eat Honestly, the child. Honestly, the way this is shaped and... <laughs> The way this is shaped and packaged, and it just says this bar, like, if I saw this sitting in, like, a hotel bathroom, I would think it's, like, a soap bar. It's, like, so... <laughs> yeah, it does look like... It like looks milk. like packaged soap. You're exactly yeah. right. Well, no one's stopping you from uh, rubbing it all over your armpits before you eat it, guys. <laughs> well, I want that kid to enjoy it before I devour him, so... What, you know. <laughs> what, what, what do you guys think of these flavors? When you read Madagascar vanilla, almond, and honey, does that sound like something you would like? No. I'm not a huge almond guy, but vanilla and honey are fantastic. I like almonds quite a bit. Like, I like to eat the kind bars that have almonds, and I like Hershey's with almonds, so I like almond-based snacks. I established last time I don't like honey that much, uh, last episode, and I'm somewhat allergic to almonds, so we'll find out how this goes. <laughs> oh, jeez. I mean, I don't care. It's... Not a bad allergy, <laughs> just like my throat closed it up a little bit. Well, I really hope you die by the end of this episode. I, at least we're, <laughs> we're doing it last, at least. I'm glad we did yeah. this thing last. <laughs> if this is the last thing I eat, give my body to those hungry children. <laughs> <laughs> they that can eat you, life. and then we can eat them. Yeah, right. All right, let's open this thing up. It very much has the appearance like of, granola bar. of like, uh, it's a lot like the kind bars where it just looks like a bunch of chia seeds all loosely pasted together. It's very sticky, sticky to hold. Ooh, yeah, that is, uh, that is a charity bar. <laughs> <laughs> they put I don't think it's no that money bad. I... actually making this taste good. <laughs> no, all right. I would, I would sooner eat this over that popcorn, like, in a hot second. Oh, for sure. I would not, but. I eat all a lot right. of junk, like, I eat a lot of these, like, so-called healthy bars that who knows how really healthy they are, but are built that way. This is a little better than I thought. This is 90 calories, though, for something this small. It's probably not that healthy, right? Or is that good? you got to fatten those kids up. <laughs> now, does it matter to you guys, like, when you're eating a snack, if it's, like, fair trade, GMO-free, and helping children? Like, like, does the story of the company help at all when you're looking at something or no? Like, do you care? I only care if it doesn't mean that the thing costs significantly more. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, when I go to the grocery store and they have regular milk, like a gallon for two ninety nine, or I could get like organic milk for five ninety nine, or something. Like, there's no way I'm paying twice as much for organic. But if it was like basically the same price or close enough, you know, then mm -hmm. yeah, I'd be like, all right, let's save some kids. What I care like, in that. I care uh, in that. I like to buy it and then show everyone while I eat with the package <laughs> facing toward them, <laughs> and just being like, oh. I saved that kid today. What'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> and then they, when they say, like, I didn't do anything, you just rub it in their face, like, rawr, 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 look at me save lives. Rawr. I just like to eat, like, a hundred of them in a row, just saving kids all day long. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are the modern-day Gandhi. <laughs> when you do that at McDonald's, that's really annoying when I'm eating, like, my... Yeah, I'd take it into McDonald's, just <laughs> by myself, eat it in front of people. <laughs> Well, cool. Was that burger made with slave labor? Mine isn't. <laughs> eating it. But God, oh, that slaves? Why are you saying that? I, yeah, it doesn't really matter to me, I guess. But I, it's not a bad thing that they do that. But I guess I don't. Like, what about like when you, if you know, the, like veal, like where they somehow like the, the the animal itself didn't have a great life, and then they killed it just to make it taste better, like veal or foie gras or something like that. So I've been, I, yeah, I've been. I don't normally care. So, like, okay, so I have the philosophy that I'll try pretty much anything once except human. So, like, if there was, like, dead panda or something, like, I would be like, all right, I'll try baby panda or whatever. But I don't – I'll try it, but I don't necessarily like that stuff. So I do – so my wife loves foie gras, and she'll eat a lot of foie gras. Like, whenever we go out and she sees it, she'll get foie gras. And I know foie gras is, like – one of the worst things you can eat from like sort of an ethical standpoint. So yeah. I'm glad that I don't particularly like it so that I have no problems like eating it. But if I really, really liked foie gras, I'd probably just be like, well, oh, well, it was just a goose. I mean, <laughs> I mean, when it comes down to it, where it's just, I, I wouldn't have an issue just cause I would feel hypocritical about eating a bunch of other animals. 
yeah. you know, just like not like the ones who got older had some great great life in between. But uh, I stopped the line at eating humans. Yeah, I'm gonna chat on that. Yeah, <laughs> cannibalism bad. That's where we come down on that. Where do you come down on cannibalism, Geiger? Um, cannibalism. I mean, I'd try it. I mean, uh, no, we're I, gonna I, run I, out I, of snacks eventually, so. We might... yeah. <laughs> I mean, we did eat human scabs earlier. In this uh, on, the, on the fifth episode, we each have to cut off a finger and mail it to each other. <laughs> Um, Fifth. I don't, yeah, I don't like, I love veal. I don't order it as much because I do know how it's, but I guess in the similar, we were joking about McDonald's, like those cows have a terrible life. They just herd them into a thing and shoot them in the head. It's not like they're love and life. So I eat them. So they shoot the cow in the head. Some of the places they have like a bolt gun that goes to their head and kills them instantly or something that slits their throat and drains all the blood out. Um, Man, nobody so wanted to listen that- to this podcast to start with. Now there's no <laughs> chance. <to listen. laughs> That's right, folks. And sometimes they'll just have sex with the cow until it dies. Pretty gross. Uh-huh. This is the problem with this bar saves lives, is it starts these conversations that we really don't want to have bar, about the ethics of eating, eating young cows. I feel like consuming this bar made me woke. Is that how you say it? <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's get some verdicts on. I'll I'll start off. I haven't started one yeah. yet. I would continue to eat this. I would actually potentially get one of these if it was cheap. I would get it. I it to me it tastes good. I like the honey flavor, and I think I've gotten old enough to where when I eat a whole bunch of junk, I feel so crummy later that. Eating something like this, I feel better afterwards, and some days it, that's just my preference. So I'm actually going to go the, give this, surprisingly, a like that. What do you think, Hager? I liked it a lot better than I thought it would. It's got a lot of flavors that I don't normally like seek out, like vanilla and honey. And like I said, sometimes almonds make my throat kind of close up. So I don't know if I would ever order it on purpose. And by order it, I mean buy it from a store. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't go into McDonald's and say, give me a this bar saves lives. I will now. Uh, <laughs> but no, I wouldn't. <laughs> but um, I, I'm on Novak. It wasn't bad. I've had, like, my wife keeps kind bars in the house because they're gluten-free and all that stuff. And I kind of eat one once in a while. This was okay. I would I would give it a a slight like that. Not bad. Oh, I, would, I would need it again. It wasn't bad. Two like that. That's two people who like saving children's lives. Let's see what Chad has to say. Chad falls on saving other human beings. When it comes to saving other human beings, I am very indifferent. So (laughs) I can take or leave other humans. (laughs) No, so I here's what I think about this bar. I expected to hate this bar when I when I grabbed it. When I picked it up, I was like, "All right, this is going to be great. I'm going to spit this out mid podcast and." probably try to make myself like gag just to like because i'd rather taste the bile that comes up from my stomach than this flavor. but i actually did hate it yeah. i feel like it could be better if instead of almonds it had peanuts if they did that i think then i would definitely like eat this but as it is because i'm just not a big fan of almond i'm gonna say i'm indifferent to that all right so two two people like needy children and one is totally fine with <laughs> fattening them up. And... Well, what I like to do when I see needy children is I'll feed one and then kick simultaneously another one in the face. Yeah, you got to keep the balance. Well, look, I mean, Chad's just saving more of these bars to give to the children so they can eat. Like, we're selfishly eating them and taking them from the children. You know that. So we have uh, two likes and an indifferent, and so that actually... I believe makes that this bar saves lives somehow the top choice of the week because I think it is yeah I think it's the winner this week just barely because the the uh, chocolate I think Chad was wavering so surprising the surprising winner yeah I think I like the, the the bar better than the brownie brittle yeah which if you guys had to get one of these which would you get you, you had to eat another right now. yeah I would I would pick the bar Geiger um popcorn. I kind of don't hate the pop I got to be honest I don't hate the popcorn it's not the brownie. Uh, probably the popcorn because they like salty stuff more than sweet. All right, and I'd go with the bar. So the bar takes it, and it has set the bar for the future episodes. So um, 
And that's going to bring us to the end. And uh, we'll be back again to bring you more snacks. And uh, we'll see you next time.